Welcome to Business Unveiled Podcast. This is the place where we help overwhelmed, time-starved entrepreneurs like you make the profitable shifts to get more done and get more out of life. I'm your host, Angela Prophet, award-winning eight-figure entrepreneur and CEO. And in every episode of Business Unveiled, I'm bringing you conversations that will give you the expertise and strategies that will scale your team and business so you can get shit done. That's GSD in our world. So get your time back and grow a business that helps you be present in your life. Let's do this, y'all. Y'all, it's Angela. I'm back for another episode of Business Unveiled. I am super excited for our guest today because she's going to talk about something that a lot of people ask for. They want this thing. They want this community, but they're not really sure the strategy. They're not really sure how to get there. And in theory, it sounds like this great thing, but there is a, li- a, a little bit of work that has to be done. So we're going to talk about that today. So Lisa, welcome to the show. Hey, it's so great to be here. Thanks. I'm super excited. Before we jump in and start talking about membership programs and building communities and the strategies around that, will you take us back and share a little bit more about your past and how have you gotten to where you are today? Oh, my long-winded story. You want to hear that? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's um, important for people to know the okay. context of like how... Cause we talked to so many amazing entrepreneurs who were like, yeah, we do eight, nine, 10 figures online. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. How did you get there? How did you get there? Yeah. That easy. <laughs> yeah, no. And I wouldn't say that I've, I have that sort of overnight sensation story at all. I actually have that slow growth story. So my, my slow growth story is that, I mean, in 2000, uh, I can't remember six, I think I was like my friend's going away for her fifth like kiteboarding trip this year and I'm stuck in a cubicle I know I'm I kiteboard it's fun and um and uh like and I was stuck in a cubicle with my two weeks of holidays going like there's got to be more to life than this and um a couple you know I I did some exploring a couple years later I ended up taking my life coaching and I thought well at least I will have some major personal development (laughs) after I do this So I then started what I thought was a business with my life coaching skills, which no one at the time knew what a life coach was. So think about that. 13 years ago, it was still like pretty new. And I guess like I'd say in 2009, I started with a newsletter and I just was like, hey, everyone, I've started this business. And gradually over the years, you know, I got some clients, um, went through some, like had a baby, then a divorce. Like I went through some, you know, busy baby, not sleeping for a couple of years. So it was hectic. Yeah. It was hectic. It was, I was, it was challenging. Sleep deprivation is not like there's no, the brain fog is not a a business thing. You can't work well with that. It's really hard. So, you know, through all that, I knew that business was what I was most attracted to. Now, this is the problem of being in love with something that you don't necessarily have that like huge story. Like I hadn't run a really huge successful business or, you know, I'd helped small businesses. I'd been in kind of more management consulting before that. So I understood business and I was, I'm very strategic brain, but I didn't actually have that. I know exactly how to do all this. So that was again, that slow growth learning curve in that had I started out with a really specific skill set, like, Oh, I do copywriting or ads or something like that. I could have grown that part of the business faster because it's so niched and specialized and then opened up to more broader stuff. But that was something I didn't really figure out. And I was stubborn about what I wanted to do. So, you know, I ended up um, getting some business strategy training in 2015, which was, that was quite life-changing for me because that gave me amazing tools that I could then use with my clients. And that is kind of in my journey to there and then niching down to memberships, realizing that there's there's so much more room in that space of talking about memberships in a whole different way that have not been talked about uh, by not many people. It's and so there's a lot of room there to really address this as a new way of doing business and serving people. Yeah, so that's and even where I am. Be- yeah, and even before we started recording, we were talking about 
there's a lot of men in the membership space as being experts and teaching how to do it and the strategies around it. And there's not a whole lot of women. So you're going to be that girl, right? (laughs) I'm going to be that girl because I really feel like there's, um, deeper ways of looking at why we do things. And a lot of women like you and I were also talking about how important it is for us to get our clients across the finish line and how we don't want, we're not as we are focused, you know, on sales to an extent, but not sales at all costs. Like I want sales Mm -hmm. and people getting results. And that's, you know, almost in a way why I've been has like slow to go into one to many models, because I kind of like knowing that I can actually see this person change. It gives me a lot of, and see new, new vision and new possibilities that that gives me a lot of reward. And so I think that's part of where we can bring a different, um, value set to our clients who have those value sets who are like, I can't just try to sell as much as I can. It's really hard to, tr- to teach someone a big marketing or aggressive strategy when they don't have the values or the interest and, in, and in following it, then they're they're It's going to be hard for them to adopt any of it. So let's bring some new, more realistic ways of doing things out to the world. Right. Yeah. Right. So your whole business is called scaling deep and it's around scaling deep. And so to you, when you named all of that, what, what was the thought process behind scaling and then scaling deep? Like, what does that mean to you? Well, what that means to me is that humans were designed to evolve. Like we are not status quo. Like we get one goal, we're on to the next. And yes, that could be, you know, provide some challenges to us never being satisfied, but let, you know, let's face it. We compare, we, there's always somebody with more and, and that's a survival instinct. So we're always going to want to grow. And I think growth is good and I love it, but I don't think that we are, should be obsessed with growth for all material reasons or, um, like, because we feel we have to, like, we need to, to do it our way. And so I just want to acknowledge that we are designed for this, but we are also designed to figure out how to find more satisfaction in it because we're not in it. a lot of us. So we're at least, if you're listening to this, you're probably not in a survival, uh, situation. you probably have, room to explore and choose. And so how do we do it mindfully so that we're actually happy (laughs) instead of just thinking we want what everyone else wants. So let's put some thought into it. Yeah. And, and I love that because to me, it's like, if I'm not growing or if we're not doing is trying to scale something or gathering data points along the way to see how we can make something better. It's like, why are we doing it in the first place? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, my old mentality before I worked with this one consultant was, um, I mean, we had so many different products and funnels and we were like half ass doing 10 different things. And then I met uh, a group of, of people that I was in a mastermind with and they're like, no, 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 you have it all wrong. Like you need to focus on one thing, one thing, only talk about that one thing and then go really deep with it, scale that. And like, that's really what you become known for. Yeah. And, and I thought they were lazy. I'm like, this is crazy. Like what? And then I was like, oh, I'm the stupid one. (laughs) I really need to pay attention to what they're doing, but I didn't know how much like went in, like behind the scenes. I mean, we were even talking before we were recording and so many details go on behind the scenes of like trying to make sure that you're creating that value for, for, yeah. for your people and for your community. And so for you, how did you land on membership? Like I'm going to have this, this membership and, you know, yes, like you said, it comes with revenue. We all have to make money. Money's a tool. Yeah. Yeah. We all have to have money and make a living at it. And when you focus and you're doing what you love, which is the optimal happiness, as a lot of yeah. people would say, yeah, what what really drove you to say, okay, I'm going to focus on membership. Okay. And I love that question. I'm going to be as honest as I can with the answers. So the first reason why I got in, why I sort of discovered this is because I needed to niche down and I knew that everything I did needed to be more niched because 
you've got to have a, a large audience um, for however you, you, you get it <laughs> to, to be broad and like live the life you want, you know, like imagine that brand messaging with somebody super famous <laughs> and, yeah. and imagine that brand, brand messaging was just like a hundred thousand other people. So it's not that that was my messaging, but it was still, even as a business strategist, I always knew that like, I needed to be like a something, something strategist. Yep. <laughs> and I've been looking for that for years, but of course me being very truth based and then like honest, you know, to a fault, I knew I had to come by it for real and I had to love it. And I had to find it, um, like interesting. And then I could talk about it forever. So I purposely had been on the radar, like all that been on the radar. And then my biz bestie who we've walked her back and forth, like all day long, most days, uh, she was like, why do you become a launch strategist? And she was kind of like pushing me and pushing me. And I'm like, Ooh, like the thought of that was like, no, like just none of that appealed to me, but in her kind of bugging me, well, why not? Well, why not? You can hire people. I'm like, I just, you don't understand. Like, that's not the thing that I want to stand for. And that somehow in that conversation, I thought of memberships. And when the thought of that came up, I was like, oh, I have clients with memberships. Like I've already helped people improve their memberships. And it's like, I love business models. So my absolute favorite thing to do, which I've been doing for years is I work with like on VIP business design days where we help design their business model. Like, it's like, what is that unique value that you bring? What is that sparkly thing that you excites you? And what is the offer? Like what, and what's the transformation against for people? And that is like my number one thing to do. And it's like, I want to sit down with anyone and I want to figure that out. So that was like, oh, I still get to play in that space base, but it's specific. So that is how, and then I kind of fell in love with it more as it sort of sat. So I didn't rush off and change all my brand messaging. I put out an article, you know, I, a lot of people were like, Oh, that's so awesome. I've been thinking about this and this and that. And I got a client out of it. So I got a lot of validation from the get go. And then I looked around, and I thought like, there's no women in this space. Like really like leading it, like leading it as much. And I'm, there's a lot of women leading amazing membership communities. So I just thought this is just perfect. So, and I, I'm just at that phase of my business where I'm like, when I know there's a good idea, it's a good idea. So I just awesome. decided I'm going to go for it. And then the whole, um, I don't know, year of 2020 and all the enough is enough kind of, you know, that came out of it from so many levels started really pointing out to me some of the, the things that were bothering me about online business speak. And I was feeling more vocal about it. Like, you know, like why are we buying these like medium priced programs with thousands of people in them and not getting results and being like, but the video is clear, you know, when you can't get any support and realizing that, a community or a month to month membership, even though I don't recommend starting off necessarily month to month <laughs> for some people, you can have a bit of a minimum. Um, it, it just allows people to then make more ethical decisions. Like they can say like, this isn't for me and they've paid their month or two or three and they can leave without having them be at fault for making a purchase or something that they decide that then they can't do, or that wasn't quite their style or they didn't resonate. So I just felt like maybe this is a new way of delivering. Not only is it practical because the whole world is turning to subscriptions for everything. It was also a little bit more ethical to me and um, with all with the kind of idea of belonging and stuff. So all that started to like um, make it my why. Like I just started to see like, wow, like this isn't just a great model for practical reasons, recurring revenue and all the things. It's also like really generous in mm -hmm. a way. I, and I just felt like this is the dream business model for people who really care. <laughs> so I was yeah. like, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. So I know that yeah. memberships, like for, for those of us who've been in the whole sales funnel world and mapping the digital customer journey for a long time, like they've been around for a while. Yeah. And then they kind of dipped off a little bit and then. Because it was this big rush to passive income for a while. And that's, that's yeah. why I think they dipped off because I think they're being sold a little bit as this yeah. miracle cure. <laughs> Yeah. To revenue. <laughs> and then I noticed like tech companies 
and software companies yeah. and then you know, really large companies. I mean, there's apps that I've used for years and even software that I've used for years. And then about, I would say right before the pandemic, they're like, okay, we're going to even Adobe, like in edit, um, yeah. editing video and stuff. It's like you used to could just buy the license, right? Yeah. And, and Microsoft, everything you just, you go buy the box and you put the CD in and then you own it and it don't work like that anymore. And so now it's like a, a reoccurring. And if you pay for the year, you know, you, you get a, a better deal or whatever. Yeah. Um, and most of these tools, like we know we need them. We know we have to have them in order to service our clients. So of course I'm just going to pay the annual membership, but it's like when I saw tech technology really moving and apps and software is moving into that, I could tell, okay, this is really going to come back. Like this is just going to be normalized and standard. Yeah. And so do you think because of other industries starting to do that, that really set the tone for what a small business owner can come in and do as far as memberships go? I think it's helped us think about access, right? And the access we want in the way we want it, because there's also, it's kind of like the whole tiny digital product thing. Like there's tons of them, but it doesn't mean they're not a good idea because it's still, you're, you're still setting up a, a level of like, this isn't free. Um, yeah. like, I mean, I was saying the other day, like I have a Spotify membership that I sometimes don't think I use for a whole month. Like I don't, I don't listen to tons of music and there's other people in my household who have, <laughs> who have membership that their membership and they play it. And so I'm, but it doesn't mean that I wouldn't, I would just cancel it for not having access or, you know, you might learn something from a group, but then you love the group and it's really worth it to you to, to that. Cause you're going to be buying something that's mm -hmm. going to replace that need. So I think we got used to it and we have so much pressure, uh, to, to learn and grow and improve everything. And so when it comes to business to business or even business to consumer, like why not just have a quality control, uh, sort of filter of where we can get access when we need it versus having just everything free because there's so much free out there and we're kind of want to discern a little bit. And, and I think also just different, you get a bit of all in one with some memberships. I mean, you get like, oh, I got community or I've got a course I can dip into when I need it or, and, or mentorship or whatever. So I think we got, yeah, we've, we've been, it, it's in how we pay we're comfortable with. And then also the differentiation between free and like the pre the freemium and paid for. I love that freemium. And it's not like everything is, is expensive, right? So yeah. there's even membership groups where it's a dollar a month, it's $5 a month, it's yeah. $10 a month. Nothing has to be expensive, but it's like the value. And then, like you said, access, that is the key word of what access are you going to get to that person's membership? So what are some of the obstacles that when, if, if someone listening or watching is brand new and they're like, oh, this sounds like a really good idea. It's, it is some work. Like the, the fact that someone started to say like, oh, you built this membership and the whole passive income thing, yeah, which it true. is, it can be that, but there still has to be a strategy and there still has to be yeah. specific content that you're putting out to help your members. And, and again, bring that value. So what yeah. are some obstacles that you've seen like in your business and with your clients that, that you've really had to overcome? Well, okay. So it depends on your goals. So for some people, it's not going to make sense if you really love selling higher ticket, um, programs or you're not trying to grow volume. It's not to say you have to have a huge volume. I think you just have a higher price membership, right? So I love the idea of a $250, $300 a month group as a not, it's not super high, but it's, it's not like you might be trading off something in the short term for the fact that somebody might be there for five years. So that $2,000 sale, 
you know, person who might've gone through something and then had a free access to an alumni community forever is now like paying $300 a month. And what if they're there for five years? Right. So that's golden. Right. And, and so I think that obstacles that people are saying, it's like, well, it's not going to be worth it at a price point. And that is something to consider if you've got a small market then, or if you have other higher level services, then I wouldn't just throw up a cheap membership because I think the obstacles that like, then you got to keep raising the price. And then you've got to get people have got to get like, not to the ones in it, but to the new ones. So mentally, you've got to get your head around the people got to get their head around this idea of like, oh, I thought it would just be like this other one that's $67. And you want to charge me 147. Um, so I think that's part of it. And obviously, being niched enough that so either two things, you either have an audience already that you can bring into it. And you're like, they're just hanging out. And I really want them to come into something. And I know I have other things to sell them. So one of the solutions is like, where do you want the membership to sit in your business model? Is it your warm up program to work selling other things? So that's a like life coach school model, right? They have the $300 a month self scholars club or something. And then mm-hmm. people become life coaches from there. That's, that's totally that funnel. It could be a flagship model, which I think might be Rachel Rogers. I'm not quite sure, but she definitely has like the big one program, I think more than anything now. And yes, there's some other things that people might buy at a higher level from that, but that's a pretty like, you know, that's a huge membership. And then there's that follow-up, you know, for me, I started mine with my first one with that. It was like, I've got all these clients I'm doing these amazing like VIP days with, and then they, I don't really have anything for them. And I didn't really want to have, you know, make them all handhold higher, higher amount coaching to implement when they just needed to check in and get validation and stick to the plan. So then I created like a follow-up call only membership. We, I just do three calls a month with them. Super simple, no content, just show up and get your ans- calls answered, your questions answered. So, so one of the obstacles is this idea that you have to have everything there. You don't have to have all the things. So you got to figure out what is the number one goal that they need to get out of this over time and how do you do it and do not give them everything from the get go. If they don't need it, add it, if it grows and they need that extra thing, but people throw in everything at a really cheap price and then think they're going to get tons of people in it. And then they don't get tons of people in it. And then they've got an unsustainable program. And if you vomit so much information out to people, like like you're saying earlier they get overwhelmed yeah and then they do nothing and then they quit because they feel shitty about it (laughs) yeah Yeah. yes totally so and I know like and I even have this this problem with myself sometimes like the one of the last webinars we did it was specifically on time blocking that one thing and the girl that was like building my deck and I went through it and I'm like, this is really basic like to me, you know, and she's like, I teach so many people time blocking too. And I'm like, I don't know how they've survived this long with it. I don't either. I'm like, this is so basic and this yeah. is boring. She's like, but you have to realize you, you teach this, you're an expert. Yeah. And the way that you do this stuff in your sleep, this isn't normal. Like people don't operate like this, this way, on a yeah. normal basis. And so you, you have to keep, this is a free webinar. You have to keep it basic. Otherwise yeah. people are going to feel as though you're talking over their head yeah. or you're sharing something that they're never going to be able to achieve, which means they're never going to buy anything from you because they don't feel like you understand them. And so I thought about that and I'm like, you know, that's a really great point because when we are experts or or we do something a lot, you know, for businesses and for other people, we forget our day-to-day knowledge that, oh, this is just what we do every day, (laughs) Totally to other people. So it's like dripping things and being a little bit more basic and and digestible has been a it's a difficult thing because you always want to, I don't know about you, but I always want to make people feel like they're getting a ton of value. Yeah. But, but less is more. And I've gotten so, so strict with that, with my client, like I, and you know, even recently I have a client who just discovered she has ADHD and she's like, got so overwhelmed in the past getting through things. And she did buy, you know, has bought quite a few things. And 
but knowing that now has helped her realize that she needs a single focus like on yep. one thing. And despite the fact she can see all these ideas, the ideas are not getting her to any level of following through on something, even if she falls through on something and it doesn't quite turn out the way she wants, like selling something to the list. I'm like getting her to sell her current private offer to her list. So she can start to experience that follow through of of that rather than, oh, I need to create more events. I'm like, no, you didn't sell from the last event. So we're <laughs> going to work on selling to this list before you go out and follow this other guru's program and create more events when you're not comfortable with selling. So I think, you know, we have to um, ensure that there's a sustainable way for people to get a result. And membership allows people to, some people get results in a three months and others in a year. And I think that that's, that meets people with where they're at. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's a really fun model. I like the idea that it feels very, um, like if you've got a great niche and a great uh, service mentality and, and, and it doesn't mean it's unsustainable. Like if a group got crazy busy and you were getting tagged in it constantly, or even before you got tagged, I would suggest having office hours. It's like online office hours, like just get your questions answered during this time. I'll be online for two hours every week this time or something like that. Like, I think, mm -hmm. you know, if you have 20 people in the group and you're charging $500, you might, you know, have more than that. But if you're not, then I would say, make sure that people get what they need, but don't feel like you have to desperately respond to everything and allow the community to do so. So there's all kinds of ways, but the, the model is unique enough that it's worth designing it properly. It's not a formula. You have to figure out your features, your unique fake priorities, the unique goals of your ideal member. And that's how you design it. And it's not a piecing together things you've seen in other programs. It's actually thinking it through and that's the offer and that can be sustainable. And what's interesting is, um, you know, cause we, we've done so many courses and we've done so many different things online, like for, for, um, memberships and, and digital stuff. And what I've learned just over the years is something key that you said that just not that you have to have all the content done, it's just showing up and like having those office hours and then having people know that you're going to be there. Yeah. There's been a couple groups that I was part of where you had to submit your question like 48 hours in advance and then, um, you know, through their web form and then they would get on and they record everything. And then yeah. after, you know, so if you can't show up or if you have a question, but you don't submit it on time, you can always go back and watch the recording. So is that something that you prefer or you teach your clients to do to, I call it potty train your brain to be fun, but it's like, do you want to potty train people to where they need to ask their question beforehand? Or do you think it works better? And I know everybody has to figure out, you know, what's going to work for them, but is it better for people to submit in advance or just show up and ask the questions? I think it depends on the group size and, mm -hmm. and really, and I think that that's, that's a, a great tool for a, a group that, and, and if you are really needing to be organized and, and prepared, or if that's kind of part of how you do training, it's like, what are you, what is going on with you right now? Like any, you know, and then you can s sort of suss out, well, what are the themes that are coming up? So I think that works for a, um, medium sized, whatever that may, may be group. And, that, Cause I think adding that structure when you don't know every member and then, because there's a point where you'll, you could, you'll, most people start with founding members and they know, mo they know most of, they know a lot of the people, their former mm -hmm. clients. So I think that, um, you can be casual for a while until you can't. So that's all yeah. I'm saying is like, I mean, I love showing up impromptu. I do my best thinking when I'm in front of people and on the spot, I just, mm -hmm. that's part of how I operate and I like it. Um, there are people who, that like, I would much rather have zoom calls and live than I would have people tagging me in a conversation constantly. Yeah. Like, I don't want to do typing, typing responses as much. So I would probably train my memberships to be more like what I prefer knowing that yeah. there's, you got to show up. If you want to make money in your business, 
you got to show up, right? Yeah. At some, whether you've got a big team and you're managing the team or you're managing, you know, your clients, you're doing something. So rather than thinking everything is passive, let's get step one, which is like good recurring revenue every month, profitable member, uh, revenue, and then find out when you want to show, show up and how you want to show up. Because I think we're all different. I know some people really get drained out of live calls and I would do them hands down over type, 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 type. Me too. I would rather do video answers all day. Right. Like, and yeah. even, and, and going back to like doing what, you know, what you prefer as a person, like I'm not a good reader. I don't retain when I, when I read, I don't understand. And so I'd rather just make a video with an answer and then make sure that like, they really understand um, cause sometimes like sarcasm could be taken the wrong way. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I'm not trying to be a bitch. Like yeah. I'm just telling you how it is. Uh, and it comes across differently when you hear someone's voice or you can see their face and the, the expression on their face. And so I'm with you all day long. I would rather And then finding people else. who to start, who like what you have and not everyone's going to like everyone. And that's why there's lots of people to choose from and vice versa. So I think you just got to stay in your integrity. You got to resist the fire hose because that's going to not be great for anyone and be like, here's the value. You get. Know your value prop, right? Like know the goal, the transformation that you're trying to get for people, whatever that is, figure that out. And that has probably a lot to do with your own zone of genius and how you show up best. And that's what you have to consistently deliver. And, you know, like I said, I had this office hours type membership that I started in January and like, six months later, everyone's still showing up for all the calls. So it's like, I thought, well, is this going to sustain itself? And it's like, everyone's still showing up for the calls. I'm like, okay, so I can be that simple. <laughs> like we have yeah. a little mighty network, but I, a week goes by sometimes and I haven't posted and they haven't posted. And I, and I know, and I don't think that's a problem because I know it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. So I that's think that's awesome. part of it. You have to be confident in your value. Yeah. So if anybody is listening or watching and they want to start a membership, what are some things that you would tell them to do? Well, I would get clear on what kind of revenue you want to earn from it. Like where do you want this to sit in your business model? So is this something that you're like really committed to for the long term, or are you thinking that it might lead to other things? So you've got to know your offers and where it sits within those. Cause again, layering, you know, we said like have one thing, don't keep layering offer after offer after offer. So understand that that's really, um, what you want and then figure out kind of your strengths and how to show up and figure out and, and do the design, like figure out the design, um, of it. I mean, I have a, I have a free training that gives some of the ways that you can plan out your design in it, um, on my website. So you can check that out. Uh, but it's really like, I think the problem is the biggest problem I've seen Angela is that people do not design their program. It's like mm -hmm. they throw up the membership. They'll, you'll design a course or you'll design like a small digital thing, but it's, people don't design the membership. And it's like, that actually can be a very out of control, probably very easily if you don't think it through. So I would say, start with designing. Yeah. And we'll put that link in the show notes too. Yeah. So scalingdeep.com slash design. Yeah. So we'll put it in the show notes. So mm. if you're listening or you're even thinking or tempting, you know, like, okay, I think I want to do this type thing. Be sure to go through that and make sure that you have it laid out because even I've learned, because I used to, I like to be like cutesy with things. And I was working with a consultant. They're like, cute, don't sell. <laughs> like be clear, clear yeah. converts and cute does not convert. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, you are so right. And so sometimes what we think is going to work with yeah. people it doesn't. And so if you just ask your audience, how can you help them and what do they want and delivering what they want, not what you want to do is two different things I think can completely be a game changer, you know, from a, a revenue perspective, depending on where it fits into your business model. So mm -hmm. this, this is awesome. And not being afraid to lead. Like, I think you need to lead in a membership as well. So you are, you want to have a vision, 
really for it, for it, I think for them and for where you think you can take them, because I think that's where a lot of people are buying outcomes that they don't necessarily need. And membership can allow them to maybe figure that out along the way. What's, a, what's a priority to them. And then they'll really appreciate for that. And that, so I, you know, you know, what'll be interesting. What I'd really like to do is when I, when my business really grows in this area, I'd love to do more research on this and actually start doing some like industry research on like, how do people learn differently? And what are the, the stats around that? And what are the experiences compared to other things? Like, I think there's like, it's like, a, it's a way of learning. It's like learning design, you know, it'd be fascinating mm -hmm. to know a little bit more about what's actually happening behind the scenes. You know, if we had got some survey data and stuff, it'd be so fun. So that'd be really cool. That's in the yeah, future. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Coming soon. Yes. <laughs> Maybe a year or so, but we'll see. That's awesome. Well, if people want to connect with you, obviously they can go to scalingdeep.com and then be sure to go to scalingdeep.com slash design. But do you have a favorite platform that you hang out on if you want people to connect with you there? Yeah, either uh, Instagram or LinkedIn. I'm probably a little more active on Instagram, but I mean, I can get a DM on either of them very easily. So yeah, either of those. That's awesome. Thank you so much for being here today. This was so helpful. Yeah, you're so welcome. Thanks for having me. Awesome. And everybody that's listening or watching, thank you so, so much for your time. And let us know your biggest takeaway. Either type it in the notes or give us a shout out on social media and let us know if you're going to start a membership program. If you have more questions, be sure to connect with Lisa. She's your girl. And I will see you guys next week on another episode of Business Unveiled. Bye, y'all. That's it for this week's episode of Business Unveiled. Now that you have all the tools that you need to conquer the world and GSD, get shit done, would you share this with your friends and fellow business leaders? One thing that would really, really help us and help new listeners is for you to rate the show and leave a comment in Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you tune in and listen to Business Unveiled. You can check out the show notes at angelaprofit.com slash podcast and link up with us on social media so you can share your biggest insights and I want to know your aha moments. Until next week, remember, the profitable shifts and structures you're creating in your business help you be more present in your life. So get out there and GSD.